An unwanted child born to a destitute family in Virginia, Henry Lee Lucas was subjected to abuse and violence from the very beginning. Being the youngest of nine children living inside a one-room cabin, Henry was a regular victim of his mother's rage. When he was six, he was beaten over the head with a wooden plank so hard that he spent three days in a coma. Viola would force Henry and his crippled father to watch her having sex with strange men she brought home, including Henry's uncle who introduced Lucas to bestiality. Her husband Anderson who had lost his legs in a railroad accident, was also a regular victim to her constant torment, although Henry always got the worst of it. Anderson eventually committed suicide when he could no longer bear it, leaving young Henry as the center point of his mother's hatred. When Henry entered school in 1943, Viola dressed him as a girl, sending him to the schoolhouse barefoot and humiliated. Viola beat Henry for accepting any type of charity. She killed any animals that her son would bring home, and denied him medical attention when he accidentally cut open his eye, leading to its surgical removal. In March 1951, 15-year-old Henry Lee Lucas picked up a young girl and strangled her when she refused his advances, burying the corpse in the woods near Harrisburg. Three years later, he was sent to prison, convicted on charges of larceny. On September the 2nd, 1959, he was released and moved in with his sister in Michigan, while Viola demanded that Lucas return with her to Virginia. It was there, on the night of January the 11th, 1960, that Henry stabbed his mother to death during the course of a drunken argument. After his arrest, Lucas told police that he had sexually molested his mother's corpse, although he later recanted, a pattern that was a preview of things to come. Henry was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of his mother. He was soon after transferred to the state hospital for the criminally insane, where he remained for six years. Less than a year later, Henry is charged with molesting two teenage girls, a charge that was later reduced to simple kidnapping. He was paroled once again in August of 1975, and he married his cousin's widow in December of that year. They moved to Baltimore, but quickly separated when she accused Henry of molesting her two daughters. Cast out, Henry became a drifter, roaming throughout the Southwest, allegedly raping and killing hitchhikers as he traveled from state to state. According to Lucas, he followed a ritual of murder and necrophilia while constantly staying on the move to avoid detection from law enforcement. He claimed to be too smart for the police and knew more about getting away with murder than anyone. In 1976, while visiting a soup kitchen in Florida, he met Artis Too, a fellow convict and sexual deviant. The two quickly hit it off and Lucas moved into Tool's home in Jacksonville where he fell in love with his 10-year-old female cousin, Becky Powell. Toole and Lucas were employed by a local roofing company, but often missed work to return to the road, spreading their unforgiving version of sadomasochism along the highways and by ways of America. In 1981, Toole's mother and sister died within a few months of each other, and Becky and her brother Frank were placed in juvenile homes. Lucas helped obtain the release, while Becky and Frank were taken on the road by Henry and Lottis. Her brother Frank eventually wound up in psychiatric care after bearing witness to the duo's murderous sideshow. It was around this time that Becky became the common-law wife of Lucas, who was over 30 years older than her. When Child Welfare launched a search for Becky and Frank in January 1982, Becky ran away to California with Lucas. From there, they made it to Texas, winding up at a religious commune outside of Stoneburg. On the night of August the 23rd, the two lovers had an argument, and Becky slapped Lucas. Just as he had done 22 years earlier, 
Henry reacted with a knife, stabbing his wife to death. When people questioned Lucas about her sudden disappearance, he told them she had run away with the passing truck driver. Eventually, Lucas was arrested again after returning to Stoneburg on June the 11th. A few days later, while still in custody of the police, Lucas called for the guard and offered a confession to resolve his sins. He told officers he was responsible for the murder of Becky and several others, claiming that he had killed at least a hundred people or more. For the next year and a half, Lucas continued to provide police with what they believed to be truthful confessions, hoping he could assist them with a number of unsolved murders. As word of Henry's morbid generosity spread to other departments, police from states outside of Texas were interested in speaking with Henry about open cases. At first, Lucas estimated he had killed 75 to 100 people, then boosted between 150 and 360, eventually reaching the 500 to 600 range when he factored in killings committed with Otis. Lucas included Tool in most of the murders, claiming that they had carried out a variety of execution-style killings as a hit squad for a satanic cult. In all, investigators would eventually claim over 200 murders that were solved due to Henry's confessions, as he was taken to different states and that his memory prodded about unsolved killings. Because of significant doubt to Henry's guilt, his death sentences were commuted to life in prison allowing Henry Lucas to die a peaceful death in March of 2001. Following his death, Henry was given the nickname of the Confession Killer by the public media, in reference to his reputation of a delusional crackpot, often taking credit for killing people that were still alive. <laughs>